Hello everyone, we are the group 2 of B Scream 4B and we are going to tackle about our topic in CDA 8 which is the attributes of ecosystem and the biodiversity. So, what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem explains how energy and matter are circulated or move through different environments that includes biotic and abiotic factors. An interactive stable system or community formed as a result of various organisms interacting with each other and the non-living components of the environment is called an ecosystem. So let us understand further about the importance of ecosystems. So the major points that include the rule of ecosystem in the universe is include the following. So first, it is important for ecological process and regulations of the energy flow, supporting life systems, and providing stability. So the second is, it is essential for an utmost important process called nutrient cycling, where nutrients in the form of energy and a matter are exchanged between biotic and abiotic components. So the third one, the ecosystem allows the recycling of minerals in the biosphere. The biosphere is briefly explained further in the articles. So then next, it is produces plenty of organic compounds that help in exchanging energy among different various levels of organisms. And it flourishes people with food fibers, paper, timber, and medicines. It also provides a renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. So another thing is, why is the ecosystem so important? So the importance of an ecosystem can be understood with the following points and all terms and factors associated with it. So the first one is, the conversion of matter and energy takes place in ecosystems and energy flowing through the system is balanced as it flows from one organism to another and is cycled. Then, the different ecosystems interacting with each other is called the biosphere. Therefore, we can say that a biosphere is the sum of all worldwide ecosystems and is also known as the ecosphere. There are two attributes in the ecosystem, the abiotic components and biotic components. Abiotic components of an ecosystem consist of the non-organic aspect of the environment that determine what life forms can thrive. Example of abiotic components are temperature, average humidity, topography, and natural disturbances. Temperature varies by latitude. Location near the equator are warmer than other locations. Near the poles or the temperate zones, humidity influences the amount of water and moisture in the air and soil, which in turn affect rainfall. Topography is the layout of the land in terms of elevation. For example, according to the University of Wisconsin, land located in the rain shadow of mountain will receive less precipitation. Natural disturbance includes tsunami, lightning storm, hurricane, and forest fires second is the biotic components the biotic components of an ecosystem which are the life forms that inhabit it the life forms of an ecosystem aid in the transfer and cycle of energy they are grouped in terms of the means they use to get energy producer such as plants produce their own energy without consuming other life forms. Plants 
gain their energy from conducting photosynthesis via sunlight. Consumers exist on the next level of the food chain. There are three main types of consumers. One is the herbivores, second is the carnivores, and the last one is the omnivores. Herbivores feed on plants. Carnivores get their food by eating other carnivores or herbivores. And the last one, omnivores can digest both plants and animal tissues. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the biological variety and variability of life on Earth. Biodiversity is a measure of variation at the genetic, species, and ecosystem level. Terrestrial biodiversity is usually greater near the equator, which is the result of the warm climate and high primary productivity. Biodiversity is not distributed even only on Earth and is richer in the tropics. This tropical forest ecosystem covers less than 10% of Earth's surface and contain about 90% of the world's species. Marine biodiversity is usually higher along coast in the western Pacific, where sea surface temperature is the highest and in the middle latitudinal band in all oceans. There are latitudinal gradients in species diversity. Biodiversity is generally tends to cluster in hotspots and has been increasing through time but will be likely to slow in the future as a primary result of deforestation. It encompasses the evolutionary, ecological, and cultural process that sustain life. And also, why is the importance of biodiversity? Important of the biodiversity is fundamentally important. It is considered by many to have intrinsic value. Its species has a value and a right to exist. Whether or not it is known to have value to humans. Undoubtable Albert Einstein once said, Our task must be to free ourselves by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. All species, including humans, rely on many other species to live. Many of us were taught about the web of life at school. We need varieties of healthy and well-functioning ecosystems to support the life of all species, including humans. So why do we need to conserve most of every species? We know so little about the interconnectedness and relationships between different species that it is impossible to be sure if there are any redundancies in our natural system. In other words, we don't know if we can afford to lose a species without any adverse. Biodiversity have three levels or attributes. First is the genetic diversity. Second is the species diversity and the third one is the ecosystem diversity. These three levels work together to create the complexity of life on earth. So when we say genetic diversity, it is the variety of genes within a species. Each species is made up of individuals that have their own particular genetic composition. This means a species may have different populations, each having different genetic compositions. To conserve genetic diversity, different populations of a species must be conserved. Genes are the basic units of all life on Earth. They are responsible for both the similarities and the differences between organisms. Not all groups of animals have the same degree of genetic diversity. For example, kangaroos. Kangaroos come from recent evolutionary lines and are genetically very similar. 
and that is the genetic diversity all about and the second level or attributes of biodiversity is the species diversity when we say species diversity it is the variety of species within a habitat or a region some habitats such as rainforest and coral reefs have many species others such as salt flats or a polluted stream have fewer in australia more than 80% of plant and animal species are endemic, which means that they only occur naturally in Australia. Species are grouped together into families according to the shared characteristics. In Australia, it is not just the individual species that are endemic. Whole families of animals and plants are endemic. Seven families of mammals Four of birds and twelve of flowering plants are endemic to Australia. And no other country has as many endemic flowering plant families as Australia. So invertebrates, we say invertebrates, these are animals without backbones, make up about 99% of all animal species, and most of these are insects. Invertebrates include crabs, snails, worms, corals, and sea stars, as well as insects such as beetles and flies. Insects fill many vital roles in ecosystems as pollinators, recyclers of nutrients, scavengers, and food for others. While we may mostly notice mammals, they actually make up less than 1% of all animal species and that is the species diversity so let's go for third level or attributes of biodiversity so the third one is the ecosystem diversity so when we say ecosystem diversity it is the variety of ecosystems in a given place an ecosystem is a community of organisms and their physical environment interacting together. An ecosystem can cover a large area such as a whole forest or a small area such as a pan. An ecosystem is a community of organisms and their physical environment interacting together. An ecosystem may be as large as the Great Barrier Reef or as small as the back of a spider scrub shell, shell which provides a home for plants and other animals such as sponge, algae and worms. So that's all. Those are the three levels or attributes of biodiversity. What is the relationship between biodiversity and ecosystem functioning in the food web? So the recent theoretical and experimental work provides clear evidence that biodiversity loss can have profound impacts on functioning of the natural and the managed ecosystems and the ability of the ecosystems to deliver ecological services to the human societies. Work and simplified ecosystems in which the diversity of the single trophic level is manipulated shows that diversity can enhance ecosystem processes such as primary productivity and the nutrient retention. Theory also strongly suggests that biodiversity can act as biological insurance against potentials disruptions caused by environment changes. However, these studies generally concern a single trophic level, primary producers for the most part. Changes in the biodiversity also affect ecosystems functioning through trophic interactions. Here we review. Through the analysis of the simple ecosystem model, Several key 
aspects inherent in the multitrophic systems that may strongly affect the relationship between diversity and ecosystem processes. Our analysis shows that tropic interactions have a strong impact on the relationships between diversity and ecosystem functioning. Whether the ecosystem property considered is total biomass or the temporal variability of biomass at the various trophic level. In both cases, food web structure and the trade-offs that affect interaction strength have major effects in these relationships. Multitrophic interactions are expected to make biodiversity ecosystems functioning re relationships more complex and non-linear. In contrast to the monotonic changes predicted for simplified systems with a single trophic level.